Okay, evaluate the following limit where possible. So hopefully it's, it's possible to evaluate. Um, the limit as h approaches zero, lim as h approaches zero of cos h minus one over h. It's told us what to do. We need to do this by multiplying by cos h plus one over cos h plus one. So just before we do that, it's probably good to say why, why are we doing such a thing? Why do we need to? Well, if you think about this, so as h approaches zero, well, cos h is going to approach one, because so you know that cos zero is one. So cos h minus one is gonna be very close to zero, one minus one, zero. And then you've got an h on the bottom when h is approaching zero. So this is going to be of the form zero over zero, which is classed as an indeterminate limit which means you need to um, find another strategy to evaluate it. Now, it may well be that the answer ends up being zero, but this is absolutely no guide whatsoever. Once you get zero over zero, you need to find another way. So we have been told another way, which is quite nice. So let's see how we get on. So cos times cos h plus one over cos h plus one. So just looking at this, firstly, we're multiplying by something over itself, so we're multiplying by one, uh, which means we're not actually affecting the, um, the value of the thing we're trying to find the limit of. That's one thing. Secondly, why, why would this be useful? Well, if you look at what's gonna happen here, um, we are going to get a cos squared h in there. Um, the thing about cos squared x is you can turn them into sine squared, and when you're looking at any limit involving trigonometry, you're generally aiming in the direction of the fundamental trigonometric limit, which is the limit as h approaches zero of sine h over h. So that's what this is all about. We're looking to try and get instances of the fundamental trigonometric limit so we can, we can um, find limits from there. Right, so if we look at this, this is a difference of two squares on the top. This is going to be cos squared h minus one. So that equals a limb. So h approaches zero of cos squared h minus one and on the bottom I'm just going to write those as h times cos h plus one. There's absolutely no advantage at all in uh, expanding this bracket. Um, but with these limits you end up sort of pulling things apart and writing certain bits with other certain bits because you're looking to, to create pairs which you can find a limit of i.e. sine h over h or something like that. Right, so now we can use the substitution. We know that cos squared h is 1 minus sine squared h. So let's write that down, equals lim. So h approaches 0 of 1 minus sine squared h minus 1 over, I'm just going to leave this, h times cos h plus 1, like that. So you can see very handily these 1s cancel out, which is quite nice. And then we end up with, so we've got minus sine squared h on the top, which I might just write as minus sine h squared, something like that, equals the lim. As h approaches zero of, so minus sine h squared, something like that, over h. And I'm even going to just pull this cos bit apart. So. 1 over cos h plus 1. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm looking to get rid of this sine bit um, by trying to get an instance of a sine h over h, which I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting closer. This bit here is not going to be an issue because um, now this cos, this is cos h plus 1, which is just going to be 2. So this whole bit is just going to be a half, so I don't need to worry about that. I could even, if I wanted to, just pull that out as a half now. Right, so how do I wrestle this into a situation of the fundamental trigonometric limit? So the best way, because I want this to be sine h over h, so the way I'm going to get that to happen is if I, if I had an h squared on the bottom as well, then that would help me a lot because then I could sort of combine these in one bracket and square the thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to times this part here by h over h. 
times it by h over h, and then I'm going to get what I want. So that would say equals the limb as h approaches 0 of, well, it's going to be, you've got another h, so we could call that minus h. So we've got an h on the top that we've just created. So minus h times, and then here you've got sine h squared over h squared. Sine h squared over h squared. So we'll deal with that in a sec. And then we've just got the bit we already had times 1 over cos h plus 1, which we remember was just 1 half anyway. Right. So now, if you look, if you zero in on this middle term here, it's not term, it's all one term, but if you zero in on this, this middle bit, the sine h squared over h squared, we could rewrite that as sine h over h all squared. It's uh, algebraically equivalent. So this equals the lim as h approaches 0 of minus h times sine h over h all squared times 1 over cos h plus 1. So now remember limit laws say uh, the limit of the product is the product of the limits. So we can find the limit as h approaches 0 of minus h and the limits as h approaches 0 of sine h over h squared and the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over cos h plus 1. There's also another limit law that says that if you've got the limit of something squared, then you can find the limit of the something and then square it. So I'm obviously not going to write all that down. I wouldn't have enough space. And I wouldn't expect you to. It's not really beneficial. But I can now say this equals, well, as h approaches 0, minus h approaches 0. So that's just 0 times. This is the limit as h approaches 0 of sine h over h. Well, that's 1. And then we square it times, and we've just said, as h approaches 0, cos h approaches 1, cos h plus, plus 1 approaches 2, and this is just 1, so times 1 half. And this now is not indeterminate because it's 0 times something that's non-zero. If we had 0 times 0, well, that would be another indeterminate form. But 0 times something, or if it was, say, 0 divided by something that's non-zero, that's fine as well. So now we've got 0 times number times number. The answer is 0. And, and if you want to just have a look at it, just, just plot this graph, the original graph, 0 in on 0, and just have a look, and you should see that it's, it's approaching 0 from both directions.